Hello and welcome again to another presentation for Earth Science B. Okay, so this presentation is going to be about the Earth's atmosphere and it's going to be relatively quick because I have a burrito to eat. Um, that's just kidding, but I do have a burrito to eat. Okay, so the atmosphere. Um, it's got liquid in it, but we're going to talk about the gases in the atmosphere here. So it's 78% nitrogen, roughly, and roughly 21% oxygen. Um, there, we can get about 1% of uh, trace gases in here. Uh, most of that is argon, and then we've got uh, things like xenon, neon, hydrogen, helium, krypton, and CO2. Um, the thing about CO2 is that it's, it naturally goes into the atmosphere, but um, this percentage changes with human activity so um, this number is always going to change a little bit but the most gas in the atmosphere is nitrogen at 78 percent oxygen has about 21 percent those are going to be quiz questions okay so we'll get into the layers of the atmosphere here so we have all these different layers of the atmosphere we have <clears throat> from ground to about 7 to 16 kilometers or uh, around 10 miles is the troposphere and that's where uh, we live. We live in the troposphere. Um, that's where we have our really nice climates and um, the mountains don't quite go all the way to the top. This mountain right here would be a, an example of probably Mount Everest. It gets close but not quite. And then after that we've got the stratosphere and uh, within the stratosphere, it's like our stabilizing layer of the atmosphere. It's where we're going to have our ozone. Um, we have a large layer of ozone in here that helps block um, UV radiation. And um, we'll get a little bit more into that later. Then we've got the mesosphere between the stratosphere and the thermosphere. And uh, this is just an uh, in-between area where molecules are getting less and less dense, so we're going to have um, less molecules up there, is what I should say. And um, then after that, we go to the thermosphere, and this is going to be like the hot layer of the hottest layer of our atmosphere, and it goes into the exosphere. So this, the thermosphere and the exosphere can almost be um, intertwined. On the quiz or a post-test, it's going to ask you where satellites orbit, and they really orbit in the thermosphere. Um, but it's looking for the exosphere. A lot of scientists don't even really count the exosphere because um, it's, it's so minute. There's, there's so few particles in there that we just kind of mold it into the thermosphere. Um, so we've got this thing called the ionosphere here, and that's where we're going to have lots of highly charged oxygen particles, mostly oxygen, um, but we get a lot of electrically charged particles here in the ionosphere. So when you think about the ionosphere, think about like the northern lights. Um, that's where we're going we're gonna to see those wonderful northern lights. And uh, we see that because of electrical charge. So ionosphere, electrical charge, um, think about it being between the thermosphere. It's in the thermosphere and the mesosphere. It kind of uh, moves between these two layers. So um, we have all these things called pauses, and that's just where we get a change in temperature, and that's how we describe these layers. So the temperature kind of goes like this throughout, um, and we'll get into that. All right, so here's another just really, really good um, PowerPoint on the layers of the atmosphere. You should go to this when you're doing the quiz um, because it just kind of gives you like the features of it. So um, stratosphere is the stable layer. That's where the ozone is. Uh, the troposphere is where we live. The mesosphere is where we're going to see shooting stars, so meteor, meteoroids turn into meteors, um, and then if they get down through to the troposphere, they turn into meteorites and hit the Earth. So then the thermosphere is going to be that high temperature layer that goes into the exosphere, where uh, molecules exit the layer. It says that um, really what we're going to think about is that it just has a very, very small amount of molecules in the exosphere. Um, so that's where like a lot of satellites and um, space stations are going to start their orbit because they're, they're just far enough away to be in space, but just close enough to be able to continue to orbit the Earth. Okay, so with the atmosphere, we talk about atmospheric pressure. So <clears throat> what happens is, like I told you, there are um, 
Less molecules as you go up in layers of the atmosphere, and with less molecules, you're going to get lower pressure. Um, that makes sense, right? So think about it if, like with rocks or something. And think about you at the bottom here down at the troposphere. So if you're at the bottom and you have all these rocks piled up from all these different spheres, you're going to have much more pressure down here than if you're at the top where there's only one or two rocks on you. So um, that's essentially what's going on is these air molecules, they're um, nitrogen and oxygen mostly molecules are going to be more condensed as you go down layers. So the troposphere, um, sea level is going to be the highest pressure for air pressure, atmospheric pressure. Um, and then as you go up, the stratosphere has less pressure, the mesosphere has less, the thermosphere even less, and then you get to the exosphere where it's, there's basically no molecules up there. Um, so that's, that's the, the takeaway there, is that atmospheric pressure increases the closer you get to sea level or the uh, surface of the Earth, and it decreases the further out you go towards space. Um, so that should be easy to remember. Um, a good thing to remember, like if you like hiking, um, the higher up you go, the less molecules there are going to be, the less air molecules there are going to be. So that's why people get altitude sickness. Um, their body isn't able to convert um, enough oxygen in their blood. So they, their body literally starts just kind of shutting off. So um, that's something to remember. If you're going up even 14,000 feet, there are less air molecules up there, so your body's going to react differently. So make sure you drink a lot of water and uh, take breaks because it can be dangerous. People do die. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, temperature of the atmosphere. And so when we were talking earlier about the layers, um, and I told you that the layers are kind of classified by temperature, this is what I'm talking about here. So um, this little line here is kind of the way that temperature goes with altitude. So it starts off relatively uh, relatively um, average down here at the troposphere. This is where we live. And then as you go higher and higher, uh, mountains are colder. <laughs> if you get to the top of a mountain, it's going to be a lot colder than the, uh, the base of the mountain. And that's just because of this uh, thermocline is what we call it. But in between these layers, we call them pauses. So between the troposphere and the stratosphere, we have a tropopause right here. And then right here, between the stratosphere and the mesosphere, we have a stratopause. And then we go up through the mesosphere to the thermosphere, and we get a mesopause. Um, and then we get to the thermosphere. The thermosphere is that really, really hot layer. So um, it's hot because there are less molecules to block the sun's radiation. So the sun is the energy of the sun is just very, very intense right here. Um, and that's what makes satellites be able to continue to run so easily because they have all of this sun solar energy that they can use um, and without any clouds blocking them. So solar energy out here is very, very efficient. Um, and just remember that uh, we're looking for satellites and space stations. They technically go in the thermosphere, but what they're looking for is the exosphere on those quizzes and tests. Um, scientifically, we kind of just blend these two together because there's almost no differentiation. It's still hot up here and there's, there's very low amounts of molecules. Okay, so the ozone layer. Oh, let's go back to here. The ozone layer right here is in the stratosphere. I've said it before, but this is just a really good representation. Um, it's that stabilizing layer in the stratosphere. The stratosphere is our stabilizing layer. And uh, that's due to the ozone layer, basically. Okay, so let's talk about ozone. Ozone is an oxygen, um, is three oxygen molecules put together. So, or oxygen atoms, it is a molecule. So ozone is O3. What we breathe in is O2. So what's going on in this stratosphere layer is UV radiation is being, can you not yell? The UV radiation is being uh, hit into the ozone layer, and when it hits these ozone molecules, then it splits them apart and turns them into O1, or just O, and then O2 molecules. Um, so that's a natural process. We have all these O2 and then O molecules floating around in the ozone layer, and they, um, they smash together and they make O3. 
So what's going on with ozone depletion, what um, a lot of scientists are talking about, is ozone depletion. And um, that's due to chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, it's due to other things, but mostly CFCs. So these are like refrigerants or um, when you spray hairspray, um, they kind of have taken those out, but aerosols, that's hairspray, um, refrigerants, solvents. Um, so a lot of a lot of bad things go on with those CFCs. They, they get released into the atmosphere and then they stick into the ozone layer. And what they do is they break apart. When those ozone molecules break apart due to UV radiation, the CFCs bond with the O1 or the O and the O2 molecules right here. So what's happening is chlorine is bonding to an oxygen molecule and it's breaking up that ozone molecule, that O3 and it's making it so that what we have left behind are chlorine monoxide right here and uh, oxygen, an O2 molecule right there. So essentially, CFCs destroy ozone, um, but what they're really doing is they're breaking this apart and they're taking their chlorine atom and bonding it to one of the oxygens. So um, yes, they do destroy ozone, but really what they're doing is converting it into a different molecule that cannot be used to deflect solar radiation. So that's why chlorofluorocarbons are bad, or CFCs. Um, a lot of people don't really understand the science behind it, but it's a relatively simple concept. Um, if you have uh, a little bit of a chemistry background, you can see how this is happening. Okay, and so here is a really good picture of the ozone hole. I'm sure you all have heard something about the ozone hole at some point in your life. Um, you may believe in it, you may not, but here is picture evidence of the ozone hole. So here is 1979, before we started using CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. Um, you can tell right here in the Antarctic region, um, it goes from, from deep violet to uh, um, orange in concentrations of ozone. So deep violet means there are, are a small amount of ozone particles in the atmosphere, and orange means there are a lot of ozone particles in the atmosphere. So right here, you see, you know, this is a good amount of ozone here. Um, and remember, ozone helps to deflect solar radiation by breaking up um, its own self. So UV radiation hits ozone, it breaks up, it takes that energy from the UV radiation, and uh, breaks up into O2 and an O particle, and then they re-combine um, in the ozone layer at a certain point. So ozone is important for that reason. So we go from 1979 when we didn't use CFCs to 2008. We have since banned CFCs, but um, some countries still use them, and there's a lingering effect. So this is the large ozone hole right here, um, and it's over the uh, polar caps. Um, this is Ant Antarctica. So a thing that really, really um, increases ozone uh, depletion over the polar caps is they have polar stratus clouds. Um, I'm not going to get too far into it, but just know that the reason why it gets more intensified here is because they have certain clouds here that uh, interact with CFCs and increase the amount of CFC um, um, breaking up ozone in that certain area. So what's going on is CFCs are going into this area, they're breaking up ozone, and they are combining with that ozone so that the ozone cannot be recombined and um, cannot be used to stop the UV radiation from coming in. So what happens is we get more UV radiation coming in, we get more melting of the ice caps, it's a positive feedback loop here. Um, you all should remember that. So you get more radiation, you get more melting of the ice caps, you get more heat, and then uh, that goes right back up to the top where that radiation is going to continue to come in. There's going to be more melting of the caps, there's going to be more absorption, less reflection, more heat. Um, and so there's just another uh, example of uh, global warming. And uh, it is real, it's happening. The thing that we're looking at is um, the rate. And uh, this picture right here shows a very high rate of uh, ozone depletion and in correlation with that, a high rate of increase of temperature. So uh, that's just something to think about. And that is all. Um, yeah.
that should be it. So if you have any questions, go ahead and contact me, either text, call, or message, and uh, have a great, great week.